Mel Kuyper just released his new big board and rankings. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that today. What's crackalacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think of the draft guru himself, Mel Kuyper Jr. What do you think about his rankings? Let me know in the comment section below. I always look forward to seeing some of your responses. Uh, Got to give a shout out to who suggested to do this video. Being bam, here we go. Christian Scheisler, like you know, I can't pronounce names, so you knew this was coming, right? You knew this was coming, but thank you for suggesting it, man. Um, I look forward to doing this, and I think we're gonna have a great time with it. Let me go ahead and make. Uh, let me go ahead and just throw a sponsor in here. Underdog Fantasy, you already knew it was coming. If you haven't already, go ahead, download Underdog Fantasy. It it, it is just a wonderful fantasy football app if you're looking to make a little cash money doing something you're good at. Football. You can do best ball leagues. They go weekly. You could also do player bre uh, player prop bets, stuff like that. But when you use promo code BROSHMO, you get $10 back upon your $10 deposit. That's $20. Now you got $20 to play with and see if you can maybe, I don't know, make a million dollars, something like that. But let's go ahead. Let's get into this sucker, man, because I'm stoked. I'm excited. Uh, I will also leave a link to this uh, in the comment section or in the description if you want to go ahead and check it out for yourself. All right, man. Let's we're gonna look at his big board first. I don't imagine much is going to be different in terms of who the top guys are. I'm expecting uh, Kayvon Thibodeau uh, or Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal, Kyle Hamilton. I expect those to be like the top three. Derek Steenley. Oh, top four. There we go. I think those are guaranteed. Marvin Leal, I feel like maybe I'm just the only guy that thinks he's a top five talent right now. Uh, a lot of people do have him as a top ten, though. So uh, it's just me. But uh, maybe Aiden Hutchinson. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right. We will jump to the position rankings in a bit. Kayvon Th uh, Thibodeau, we knew it was coming. Uh, what more do you we, – uh, we've talked at length about this guy. Uh, I'll, I'll probably have rankings coming out in like a month. Uh, new fresh rankings, position rankings. So oh, we'll talk about him then. The dude's a monster. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, we already saw, is number two. I mean, yeah, when thinking about it, like if uh, even taking into quarterback value, there's really not a quarterback that I, that really anyone probably feels good about at, at the top of this draft. So Kyle Hamilton, man, he is a monster his position. I think. I don't mind seeing him here. I definitely think he's top five talent in this class. And then, I mean, even if you go back to like what Demar, um, Derwin James, like what class was Derwin James a part of? Hold up, hold the phone. Derwin James draft class was that the Baker Mayfield one? Um, all right, it was twenty eighteen. Uh, 2018 NFL draft. Look at me doing on the uh, or during the video research. Yeah, Baker. Yeah, Sam Darnold, Josh. Uh, well, Josh Allen, Josh Rosen. So yeah, I mean quarter. I mean, ugh, dude, even like Denzel Ward, um, Quinton Nelson. Like there was a lot of top talent there. So yeah, it kind of justifies why maybe a safety did not go nearly uh, or as close to the top in that draft opposed to like where where we where we are seeing Hamilton now uh Derek Stanley the dude's good the dude's good he's super athletic um people mad about the UCLA game uh, stay mad wait till SEC play uh Evan Neal here he is dude's a monster in his own right dude I called this I by the way I just called this top five Aiden Hutchinson, everyone's loving Aiden Hutchinson. I'm probably going to be the only guy that has uh, Kingsley Anegbari um, ahead of Aiden Hutchinson. I feel like he, I, I just feel like he, he, the ceiling is way higher. Um, but Hutchinson is now down to, I hear he's playing at his lowest weight, 260, he said. Uh, they list him here at 265. So, and keep in mind, he was playing around that 275, 280, I believe, in 2019 and 2020. So, he is playing it as, like, it, it, it shows. It shows. He looks way, way faster. Um, still a guy I don't think necessarily has, like, like elite bend or flexibility around the edge. 
compared to maybe a few of the other prospects, but it's pretty darn close. Um, but Evan Neal, you already know, he's wonderful. This tackle class is kind of a question mark. Uh, let's keep this train rolling. Charles Cross, talking about tackle class being a, being a question mark. Yo, Cross is kind of on the up and up. He has looked pretty darn good this year. I think at the be like the season opener, there were times where he struggled with strength, like struggled with power, struggled with setting his anchor. He's really come around. Like He's really, I think, did, done a very good job of recovering. From that game, from that opener. And it's not like he even played bad in the opener. And then it also, in Mike Leach's uh, scheme, he's going to see a lot of one-on-ones. And playing in the SEC, you're going to see a ton of one-on-ones. Well, with the best of the best. So, he, I'm really looking forward, especially this week. Alabama, man. There's some fear. Well, wait, no. I'm thinking of Ole Miss. Oh, we'll probably face Alabama eventually. Mississippi State. But... I thought he did play pretty darn well against, um, what was it, um, BJ Ojolari and, oh, Ali Gay. There we go. I thought he played pretty well against those guys. Uh, athletically, the dude's stupid good. Like, I, I'd always talk about him, Zion Nelson. You could even throw uh, Jackson, Kirkland, uh, yeah, Jackson Kirkland in there. Those guys are super athletic. And... I kind of had Kirkland as the guy I thought was going to be really good, like going to be the guy that kind of is the top in this class. Um, well, after Neil, but uh, Cross thus far he's looked more of the part than any of those other two guys. Uh, this is still a little rich for me, but woof. Uh, it, like the ceiling's there, the ceiling's there. Even Alex, man, Alex uh, from Hail Mary Podcast always gave me crap about uh, Charles Cross too. Uh, to Marvin Leal, there he is, my boy, dude, my boy. Like I said, I I consider him top five. A lot of people see him top ten, um, which big whoop, <laughs> you know, big difference. It's not that big of a difference. So I'm really probably only gonna talk about some of the some of the differences, maybe guys that I haven't discussed in prior videos. Uh, that way, you know, we're not too lengthy. We gotta get into the rankings too. Jahan Dotson, holy freaking crap. This is really high for Dotson. First receiver off the board, by the way. Really high for Dotson. Um, I don't know if Dotson's in that first round area yet for me. Uh, he he is way better KJ Hamler. Um, I mean, he's rising up a lot of people's boards. I feel maybe better in the second round right now. I mean, we'll see as the season goes on. I still feel like Chris Olave currently is the best um, wide receiver in this class. Uh, Garrett Wilson right up there with him. So putting Dotson ahead of the, those two guys, I wouldn't do that. But holy crap, man. Big Ten got some got some talent at wide receiver. All right, let's keep this uh, going. Uh, there's Garrett Wilson, matter of fact. Uh, I kind of have Olave just a bit high. I think Olave has played better than Wilson thus far this season. Um, but I do think Wilson might be the better all-around receiver. But, uh, yeah, no, Wilson's pretty darn good. And then Drake. Oh, my gosh, dude. Okay. We talk about how weak the the wide receiver class is. He's got three in the top ten. Mel, you bad man. And I love Drake London, by the way. I love Drake London. I'm not taking Drake London in top ten. I'm not taking him. I might take him top 15. I don't know. But this guy is a freak after the catch. Might not have the speed. Uh, I mean, I think he's like four or five speed, so it's not like it's bad. This guy is gonna tear it up on the outside. He's pretty sudden with his movements, like, and he just he creates such a big window for his quarterbacks. Like, you, you gotta love the guy. Let's let's see, man. Let's see, Devin Lloyd. Okay, uh, I wrote about Devin Lloyd actually. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up. It's probably gonna look all wacky because I got all my dis it's all distorted. But yeah, I wrote about Devin Lloyd here at Blue Chip Scouting. I'll leave a I'll leave a link to that if you want to check out. I, I talk I, I talk about like the Pac-12 stock up, stock down guys. But Devin Lloyd, man, really I think is he's probably gonna be my linebacker one when my rankings come around. This guy is just so good. He takes on blocks so well. Uh, he's so good around the line of scrimmage. He's gonna be an elite run stuffer. He. Uh, He's pretty, I like his lateral explosiveness too. Like he gets to the flats extremely quick. You might worry about how he handles coverage. He's been a bit, way bigger playmaker in coverage this season though. Uh, but he's got that, the length 
to not be a liability consistently. Um, he's not the athlete of like, a, okay, Micah Parsons, kind of a rare athlete. You're not going to see much of those. But I think like guys like uh, Alabama's duo, Christian um, Harris and Henry, is it Toa Toa? Uh, those those guys, he's they're probably better athletes, but not to say Lloyd's a bad athlete. It's just he's not on that level. But man, this is a guy, especially if you're a blitz happy scheme, like yo, I'm talking to you, Dean Pease. Uh, yeah, this is your this is your guy. Uh, feels a little high. There's Chris Olave. So we got four wide receivers in the top twelve. Uh, Jordan Davis, man, guys, I'm not gonna be high on Jordan Davis. I don't want to beat a dead horse. Um, it, it's it's just who I am as an evaluator, uh, if you want to call me that. Uh, I'm just not really high on these guys that, oh, maybe they can be pass disruptors, but at least they're going to be elite run defenders at the nose tackle position. I'm, that's that's just not me. I don't... <sighs> I don't find that valuable. I mean, I know like you got the exception being like Vita Vea, but he took three seasons to really emerge as that like disruptor. And he's doing it in the past. Like I'm not saying Davis can't do that. It's just I don't see enough that makes me say, hey, top 15, top half of the draft. I don't, I don't, well, top half of the first round. I don't see that. But not to say he's a bad prospect. I'd be like, I, he's going to be a second rounder for me. So yeah, Trevor Pennon, wow, he's really, he's, Mel's coming out swinging. All right. uh, I know that the, uh, and as we could see, Malik Willis, first quarterback here at 15. Uh, Trevor Pennon, I could tell you the analytics compared to Spencer Brown, way better. Way better in terms of how he held up at left tackle opposed to Spencer Brown, who actually kind of struggled against FCS competition. Uh, I don't think he's, uh, I don't think he's the athlete that Spencer Brown was. In, in terms of, like, because Spencer Brown's, like, he was 6'8". The, the dude was a big guy, and it was pretty – he was a rare athlete for that size. I don't think Pennon's on that level, but he looked impressive in the Iowa State game, and that's probably about the only game that I've really seen him in. So uh, I don't know if he's this high. I, he's going to need a really good offseason process. Uh, there's Malik Willis, first quarterback. Uh, he's probably going to be the first quarterback for a lot of people. Just seems like the safer bet right now. Tyler Linderbaum, my boy. He's going to be top 10 probably for me. I love Tyler Linderbaum. Um, I get it. Offensive interior position. It's not It's not a very high value position. But, I mean, man, you're going to plug this guy in and just feel good. He's that good, man. He can play guard, not just center. I know Mel Kuyper, when we get his rankings, he's going to have guard, center, um, and how he does, like, edge rushers, outside line. Like, it's super wonky, so it's going to be interesting looking at that. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Let's go two more. Man, five receivers, top 18, by the way. Uh, Traylon Burks has really started tearing up. After, like, kind of a cold start, to be fair, um, I think he was actually a game time decision in the opener that he was kind of nursing an injury. So it looks he looks completely healthy now, man. He destroyed Texas A&M. Uh, Nicholas Petit Ferrer, dude has yet to l give up a sack. The guy's been very good. He's very strong. Um, it seems like his most comfortable um, spot to play is the left side, which you like to hear. But he does have experience playing right tackle. So yeah, he, especially in a tackle class, that's kind of a question mark. Uh, Roger McCreary is his second. I didn't even notice the corners weren't coming off. I didn't even notice. Uh, McCreary. I like McCreary, man. I like McCreary. He's not going to be my second corner. Uh, golly, dude. I am. I'm. I'm a bit shocked. Well, Auburn hasn't faced anybody. Like, I'm reading this, he was like, he got a beat a few times last season. But he has been more consistent so far this season. They played Penn State once. Like, and not to say, but like, obviously, Jahan Dotson, he's kind of legit. But, like, that's just one team. They haven't even started really SEC play. I mean, Georgia State, ooh, Georgia State almost uh, upset them. But Roger McCreary is He's pretty darn good. I feel better about him as a second rounder. I don't think he's the same athlete 
as like uh, Noah and Big Nogany. Uh, that's really what made him a first, well, for some teams made him a first rounder because of the traits uh, and just the athletic upside. But uh, I don't think McCreary has that. Not to say he's not a bad athlete. Don't get me wrong. Dude's a good athlete still. It's just he's not that caliber of athlete. But I would say his play has been a lot more consistent than we ever saw from Noah and Big Nogany. Very interesting. I wonder where the rest of the corners lay. Uh, Matt Corral, man. Hot riser. Big game against Alabama. We're streaming a watch along this Saturday. Uh, if I could ever get that thumbnail up for it, I'm still working on it. All right, Adam Anderson, dude. He has had a sack in every game this season, except for Vanderbilt, because the starters stopped playing after, like, 20 snaps. So, yeah. But dude's wonderful. He is a pass rush specialist, though. Uh, we don't see him on – like, Georgia just doesn't use him a lot on runs, running down. So, it is what it is, but the dude's been great. Dude's been great. Uh, I love his explosiveness. Uh, still no Kingsley – an egg bar -y. um oh, you gotta imagine nick benito i know a lot of people really like drake jackson um he's still kind of he's in his way back into my good graces uh to be fair i was really high on him uh i kind of had to come down to earth daniel Falele. wow dude yeah you're really going for upside here right they're really going for upside here like the dude, yeah, rare, rare athlete for his size, 6'9, 380, but a guy that size, you ex like he's been a solid run, uh, pass blocker, like solid enough, but the dude just doesn't, like, he doesn't have that killer instinct in, in the run game. I don't know, this tackle class is kind of up for grabs. No Kenyon Green yet. Uh, I don't know, maybe they're taking that Arkansas game really hard because Kenyon Green, man, he had a rough day at the office. Ah, we see Jermaine Johnson again. If you don't know, the guy kind of has uh kind of has a uh pedigree. Former Georgia recruit. Couldn't see time on that line. I don't blame him. Yeah, the last year they had Aziz Ojalari. Uh they got Nolan Smith, uh, Adam Anderson, obviously. Uh was it Tra is it Trayvon Walker there as well? Uh so yeah, it, it good luck fine in time but i've only really seen the florida game yeah he looks pretty good there um 10 pressures on the season in four games oh he has five and a half sacks okay well all right all right maybe maybe uh i don't know man i don't know like he's got good size i gotta watch more of him i couldn't tell you this i mean this edge class is kind of redonkulous so that's a word all right, 24, Andrew Booth. I wonder if he's going to talk about the Georgia Tech game. I'm out of curiosity. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He was really, really good. Da, 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 da. You don't, you don't see how he locked up wideouts. What? Oh, okay. I see what he's saying. Uh, yeah, Clemson game, he kind of struggled with one-on-ones. Um, the dude's still a wonderful athlete. Has a really good body control. He's able to how he's able to put himself with a contested catch. Did I say Georgia Tech? NC State. He had a rough day at the office against NC State. But um I mean, I don't think that takes away one bad performance. It happens. And I think uh, a lot of it was against uh oh my gosh, I can't remember the receiver. I've had this guy on my uh <laughs> I've had this guy on my projections since uh the 2020 class. And I really feel like he's an older prospect, too. Uh, it's like a Mezzi. Gosh, I can't remember his name. I'm not even going to I'm not gonna even try to butcher it either. Spencer Adler at 25. Makes sense. Um, I mean, we're about to start conference play. Uh, well, technically, they did against West Virginia. It's where the chance started. Just going to say that. But I, this is now where we're going to be like, all right, step your game up. Rough start. Finish strong. So, yeah, we, we know Rattler's kind of been a faller. Uh, all right, this is where we get to the rankings. All right, his top quarterbacks. I, li I like to see Tanner uh, McKeith here. Like, Tanner McKeith's played some good football there at Stanford. Not a good football team around him, but he is He's doing what uh, Sam Howe is struggling to do. Granted, the Pac-12 is not exactly uh, 
the ACC. Though the ACC is not far off in terms of talent. But uh, Malik Willis, Matt Corral, Spencer Rattler, Sam Howe. I would probably go Sam Howe, number two, and then Matt Corral, Spencer Rattler. Probably I'm um, not that high on Desmond Ritter. I feel better about him day two, but even then I'm like, ugh. Uh, Kenny Pickett, I feel like, is better Ryan Finley, if you don't remember him from NC State. Carson Strong, yeah, I kind of I kind of feel like Carson Strong's going to be a second, third rounder. Uh, he feels more developmental. Uh, then again, so does this whole class. Tanner McKee definitely deserves to be talked about in the con- uh, conversation. Jaden Daniels, I've taken off my this year rankings altogether. Um, the ball placement accuracy, it's not good. It's just not good. He, he's going to come back. He needs to improve on it. Uh, Keenan Slovis, man, really feels like he's returning. Uh, but then he's got he's to gotta hold off Jackson Dart, dude. Uh, and I feel like Phil Dracovic going to return as well. Because I really think um, I the 2023 class doesn't feel like it's going to be. Feels a lot like how this class is looking too. With DJU at Clemson, kind of rough start. Um, Bryson, uh, was it Bryson Young? Bryce, Bryce Young, uh, out of Alabama. He's looked good, but, uh, I, there, there's still some things there that I'm kind of like, uh, there are minor concerns. Uh, I'm trying to think of other quarterbacks in that class. Uh, can't really think of any off the top of my head right now. Uh, maybe Will Levis out of Kentucky. He showed some, some, uh, capability. So I think definitely Phil Dracovic may throw his hat into that draft rather than this one. Keep in mind, he had the season and an injury. Let's look at the running backs. Bryce Hall, or Brees Hall, excuse me, probably going to be my top running back as well. Uh, he's got Isaiah Spiller, probably a top power back in this class. Uh, Kyron Williams, dude, he's falling off my like my list. He is just, I didn't like him to begin with. Okay, not, I don't, there ain't no personal attack against the guy. I didn't like him as a prospect to begin with. As a guy where, hey, you're receiving upsides, you're thin. Five drops. Ah. Uh, and he just hasn't looked good. Granted, that offensive line has been good for Notre Dame, but a guy like Brees Hall, you see him overcome a bad offensive line. Williams just doesn't have the same ability. So, yeah, I don't know if he even makes my top 10. Tyler Goodson, I don't know about him, man. Like, I feel like... It's just the offensive line so good there. It makes him look like a better running back. Like when the holes are so glaring, you really can't make the wrong choice. Like, you know what I'm saying? I I'm 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 a bit indifferent about him. Zach Charbonnet has been a monster. I talked about him in my video today. Um, if you haven't checked that out, go check it out. It's some of my uh risers in this class. Uh Muhammad Ibrahim. He's going to be a tough sell coming off the injury. He is an older prospect as well with a little mileage. I uh, haven't looked at Perry, uh, Pierre Strong Jr. To be fair, it's an FCS school. I don't really watch much FCS until um, the offseason. Uh, Zamir White, not a fan. <laughs> Rich, Richad White, man, he, I, he has... I don't think he's looked nearly as good as he did uh, for the four games last year. I'd have Chris Rodriguez... Higher. I think he is probably the second best power back in this class. Then again, I mean, Charbonnet is actually technically a power back. Uh, I, I think he could do a lot of different things. Uh, Kenneth Walker would be a lot higher, too, for me. Um, interesting. Fullbacks don't really need to go through these. I don't know. Now that I'm really looking at fullbacks, H-backs. I know Braden Willis has been really good. He play, actually technically plays tight end, um, but he kind of plays that H-back role there. Uh, at Oklahoma, he's like I think he's actually one of the highest grade blockers, uh, and then Sean Dykes as well. He's been really good for uh, Memphis. He's really helped the running backs back there. That running game is nuts. Uh, wide receivers, as we know, we saw we saw these five made the top twenty-five. Uh, okay, dude, I said this like like a week or maybe I said it last stream that no. I said this in the Miami, Alabama stream I did. I said, John Mechie the third might not even be the best receiver on his team. Jameson Williams, former Ohio State transfer. Dude, I don't I don't really I don't see him having a problem handling physicality like like Mechie does. 
Uh, it's really close. It's really close, to be honest. Uh, who else? We got Tolbert, who's been is a monster at South Alabama. He kind of stayed. He could have came out last year. I think he stayed this season so he could get a senior bowl. Uh, I'd have probably have Dante Demas a little higher, maybe. Yeah, I think I would. And Pickens. I think Pickens is really going to blow it up in the offseason, um, combine and whatnot. And then Justin Ross, I feel like he's coming back. That Clemson offense sucks. Ooh, tight ends. Good tight end class. Let's see how he how he has it laid out. All right, so Trey McBride's a top. I'm not going to dispute that. I think Jalen Watermeyer's close. Uh, McBride might actually have a better upside. Um... Kate Auden, dude, is going to be much lower for me. So is Charlie. Charlie Collar, he's going to be a solid tight end two in the league. For me, this is a bit high. I'd have guys like like Isaiah Likely is probably going to be up here in the top five for me. Um, James Mitchell, ah, I might have a little bit higher. Jeremy Rucker, I'm surprised he's not higher too. He's among the best run blocking tackles or run blocking tight ends in this class. Um, I think he has Cameron Latu a bit too high. Uh, the guy's a former. Oh, I talk about him in the video today. You can go check that out. I'll. I, it's gonna be in the i card. I haven't. I've watched Oregon State, but Tegan, I will not butcher your last name as of yet. Hasn't been a guy that really jumped out to me. Uh, Jaleel Billingsley, I think, comes back. He's not getting a lot of snaps. Um, Grant Calicatera. Ooh, he's a bit older too, man, but he's looking so good at SMU. If you don't remember, he used to play at Oklahoma, was supposed to transfer to Auburn. Well, he retired, came back, decided to transfer to Auburn, decided to decommit, and then he went to SMU. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the tackles here. So we know these top three, or top three, top five, excuse me. Then he has Kirkland, uh, Kennard. I'd have Kennard a bit higher. Kellen uh, Dyche, I think is how you say it. At Arizona State is a guy that I've kind of had on my uh, under the radar coming up the list because he had such a small sample size last year in his first year to start. I think he I think he was a transfer from Texas A&M, but he's played some good football this year. Uh, Abraham Lucas, uh, solid, but a, firmly a day two guy. Have not checked out Andrew uh, Stuber. Can't really say anything about him. Um, Kirkland, man, dude, that Aiden Hutchinson game was all right. Guards, uh, got my boy Icky up at the top, darn right. Icky's pretty darn good. Um, I'd be willing to list him as a tackle. Kenyon Green falls here. I, I listen here, Jameer Saul, uh, Sawyer. Okay, he's listed as a guard. I got no problem because basically in that offense, he functions as a guard. Like they'll line up two tight end sets on his side <laughs> sometimes, or he'll have the tight end. He's never truly in a one on one. Uh, Logan Bruss, uh, I've watched a, a itty bitty bit. Um, can't really tell you much. I know that Wisconsin line uh, is pretty darn good, though. Uh, Zion Johnson's a monster. They're a Mumford great day two option, guard or tackle. Uh, we got, I haven't really watched the Oklahoma offensive line. Uh, you think I would too with, um, who transferred there from, was it from Tennessee? Was it? Oh my gosh. I can't even, I, I, I need to know this. Who, who is this? All right. Let's take a look at Oklahoma roster. Oh my gosh. Roster. Football. Why softball the first thing that pops up? Alright, alright. Where's uh, just take me to our lads? I should have put in our lads. Alright. Here we go. Oh man, I'm gonna kick myself the minute. Oh, I should have put in depth chart. Here we go. I'm gonna kick myself the minute I see the name. Wait. Oh, Wayna Morris. He's not even starting. What? They say what? Yeah. Interesting. Fun fact. Uh, Ed Ingram is a he's, he's your typical LSU type of lineman. He big and strong. Uh, Dylan Parham's pretty solid. Uh, needs needs to gain weight. Uh, Schaefer I like as a as a third rounder. 
here at 10. Kind of nice. Let's see the centers. Linderbaum, Jared Patterson, yeah. Grant Gibson has been good. Uh, oh, this is a bit high for Forsyth. Uh, Donovan West I'd actually probably have up, up here at 2. Uh, Alec Lindstrom, I'm not exactly that high on him. I don't, I mean, he's been much better in terms of, um, setting his anchor, handling power, uh, but not enough to be like that encouraged. Drake Kramer, or Doug Kramer, dude's a lunger. He's a lunger. Uh, Nick Ford, not a fan. Uh, Michael, uh, I'm not going to butcher the last name, but, um, this is one that I've been getting a lot of suggestions to check out. I just haven't. Um, sorry, there's not a lot of incentive for me to check out Missouri's offense. Then again, they had that banger OT game against uh, Boston College. It saved me from how boring that Wisconsin Notre Dame game was. And Ben Brown, I'm always surprised that he's still in college. Feels like he's been in college forever. Here's the defensive ends: uh, Thibodeau, Aiden Hutchinson, Demarvin Leal. He's listed as an end. To be fair, he is playing the majority there. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, George Karlofkis being um, his fifth. Wow, Ali Gay, he's got really high. I don't think Ali Gay's got elite. Like, Maja Sanders, I'd have much higher. Um, I mean, he's got a lot of... He, I bet you he's listening to a lot of these other guys at all, outside ta or outside linebacker. I hate that. I hate that. Mel, get with the times, man. Um, Arnold, this guy, I listed as a sleeper. Before the season, man, I listed him as a sleeper. You go back, check the video. I was like, yeah, Temple transfer. Dude's pretty explosive. Never really got time at Temple. Uh, and guess what? He's showing out. So, yeah, he's a guy to watch. Uh, Trey Williams, I talked about in today's video. Amari Barno, I haven't really personally checked out myself. Um, I probably only watched the NC State game. But, yeah, Zach Harrison is a guy that, yeah, his, his draft, like, he's just so raw. Uh, raw, undisciplined, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Let's take a look at defensive tackles. Uh, he's got Davis. Haskell Garrett, I'd have Winfrey up here. Jaden Pevy. Uh, Fidarian Mathis had a heck of a game this weekend, by the way. Uh, Travis Jones, I'd have a bit higher. Zachary Carter, I'd have higher too, dude. I have loved Zachary Carter for like over a year now. I've been, he's been in my like preseason top 10 almost all the time. Oh, I love this cat. He can play a lot of different spots online. He's been playing in the outside. This guy's really stepped up his game, man. I've been... Oh, man, I love Zachary Carter, dude. I, I'm so happy to just see him doing well. Um, believe it or not, I uh, haven't watched it. I really only watched the one Arkansas game. Uh, opposed, uh, like Talking about like their defensive line specifically. Because I wanted to go back and watch Trey Williams. But... Uh, I can't say I really noticed John Ridgeway, but again, I'd have to go back and take a look at it. PJ Mustafa, um, have yet to check out Thomas Booker. I think he's a guy that needs like a senior bowl because that he he plays kind of like five tech slash three. Like, yeah, he kind of you get this guy one on ones like he's gonna dominate. Like, he's a, I think he's a really good physical specimen. All right, inside linebacker. Let's see what you got going on here. Demari, okay, Demarvian Overshot. I'm just going to say this real quick. I was really high on him before the season. He's played like booty cheeks. Clap, clap, clap. Booty cheeks. Uh, Nicobe Dean, uh, Christian Harris. Kind of expect those guys. Henry Toto. Uh, Devin Lloyd. Mike Rose. Um... He was on Todd McShay's big board, and I said, hey, man, this guy I need to go check out. Haven't done it yet. <laughs> Jack Sanborn, he, he's pretty solid. He's, I think he's firmly maybe like this third, fourth round guy, though, uh, just because he's limited as an athlete. Uh, Ventrell Miller, poor man's Troy Die. Well, not poor man's, just uh, Troy Die without length. Uh, haven't really watched um, Campbell or Gemmel. Uh, Damian Clark, I've seen a bit of, um, he's all right. Outside linebacker, here we go. Adam Anderson, he's got Brandon Smith here. Uh, Will, wow, he's got Will Donald higher than Nick Benito. Kingsley at Nagbari. Arnold Jackson, excuse me? 
Excuse me, senor? Like, I like Will, Don Will McDonald. I think he's playing out of position. I don't like him this much. So, nope. <laughs> uh, uh, Aaron Hansford has played better football. I don't know if that makes him top 10 at the linebacker position. All right, to be fair, this is outside linebacker. He separates... He separates inside and outside, so um I do I can't wait to look at more of the Cincinnati like more Cincinnati tape in general. Cause like apparently they have like they have more legit uh draft picks than uh sauce than um uh I guess uh, if you want to include uh was it Wiley? I can't think of Josh Wiley, I think, the tight end. Um Desmond Ritter uh Myja Sanders they got a few other guys so this Darian Beavers guy uh first off what a name Beavers love it but yeah yeah I can't wait to check him out uh Nolan Smith he's starting he's having he's in the process of a breakout season haven't really checked out Shannon Tindall too much though uh boy was it boy Maffe I'm gonna butcher his name uh the dude's just athletic upside like um yeah Let's see. Cornerbacks. Where you got my boy Sauce? At eight. Okay. Uh, Trent McDuffie at four. Kair Elam. Man, that's at five. Blows my mind. I like Martin Emerson. Y'all know I like Martin Emerson. If you ain't new to the channel, you know I love me Martin Emerson. Josh Job. I, ooh, I don't know if he makes my top ten. Uh, Sauce Gardner. Mikel Wright had that really tough game against Ohio State. Um, where Olave and Wilson just kind of beat him bad. Uh, Cam Taylor Britt. All right, straight up with Cam Taylor Britt. The last, I've only probably, I only remember watching the Nebraska Illinois game. And I think that's where he had the, what was it, the kick return where he was, I, I, I don't know what he was doing. Was it like a fumble out of bounds or did he catch it out of bounds? And he tried to throw it back in? It made kind of no sense. Was it a kick return or a punt return? I can't remember. But uh, he got lucky. Lucky it was a forward lateral. <laughs> it would have been a big turnover. Uh, not that it helped him. They lost that game. Uh, Darian uh, Kendrick, I think he's more talented than where he has him. It's just character concerns are a real thing, so. Uh, safeties. I'm excited. Jaquan Brisker. The only thing with me and Brisker is in terms of athleticism, Catalan's better. Uh, he doesn't even have Brandon Joseph, which granted Brandon Joseph's not having the best year. Um, I think Battle's better. Hill's better. Cross is better. Uh, McKinley, honestly, is better. McKinley is a better athlete. But Brisker, what he does, he's going to be a Either you could play him in the box. I think he's going to be a good split high guy like a John Johnson, uh, Adrian Amos, that type of safety. I think he'd do really well in that role. But I feel like that type of – like that is like a day two – that's day two value, at least to me. Um, uh, Lewis Sign, dude, <laughs> he might be the – Best Georgia safety to come out in like last five years. <laughs> Cause like Georgia's been pumping out safety prospects. It's just none of them seem that good. And I think Sign's actually gonna like in terms of being an athlete, it's a bit better than the guys of past, like uh was it Richard LeCount? Like him and J.R. Reed were very similar athletes. Like they were more so it, it was they were very disciplined. And they, it's kind of like Deontay Thompson. They made good moves on the ball, but one misstep and they're out of the play altogether. Uh, that and Sign could actually tackle compared to those two. So, uh, Mark Webb, I think, was more of a what corner, too. He was, or like, I think he was playing in the box. Uh, who's the other? Oh, man, there was another corner that. I think went to slot or ended up playing box two in the NFL that I really liked last year. I can't remember. Georgia, man, secondary. 
full of talent. Uh, wait, Tyke Smith? Where Tyke Smith at? Tyke Smith, he's that's interesting. Um, I have not checked out this Bell Cat from Florida A and M. Uh, Jalen Pitre, he kind of plays. He plays slot for Baylor. He's pretty darn good. So yeah, it makes sense. I mean, we could go into the kickers. I can't tell you much. Uh, I remember Cade York because of Marco Wilson. That fall game, legendary. Uh, actually, Gabe here has kind of got a he's got a banger leg, dude. Uh, I couldn't really tell you too much about. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. You don't draft kickers or punters in the draft. <laughs> So I don't really look at them until like super late. And even then I go on analytics. I'm not like a kicking expert by no means. Uh, lawn snappers. Got to love. Yeah, dude. Got to check out lawn snappers. We got to do it for, uh, for our boy that I, I can't remember the name of. Oh my gosh. This is going to kill me. Oh, uh, let's Oh, is it? That ain't it. That ain't it. Oh, uh, it's Blake Ferguson, right? It's starting to come back. Blake Ferguson, thank you. Yeah, we gotta do this for Blake. Oh man, bunch of names I don't recognize, man. Darn shame. Let me know what y'all think. This video is running long. It's more of a reaction video to uh, Mel Kiper's uh, mock, but yeah, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to release this probably as soon as possible. Tomorrow, you get a mock draft. Hopefully, uh, actually, let's, let's check right now. Let's check right now. I'm going to go this screen. There we go. The draft network. Um, I'm not even going to log in. I just want to see what their draft order is. Select all. Oh, dude, yeah. Maybe it's actually better if y'all see it like th this. Nope, it's not. All right. Well, I'll correct that when I need to. Okay. It's updated for the... M yeah, no, it's updated. Holy crap. Yeah, it's updated. All right. Yeah, we're doing a mock. Cool. You'll see a mock tomorrow. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. Later.